Or Bismillah Mali. Welcome to Mali, a country in West Africa where water still comes from wells, you cook over charcoal fires, camel caravans still trek across the desert, and the most common form of transport is scooters, bicycles and donkeys. Here, as elsewhere in West Africa, every year thousands of young boys aged anywhere from 4 to 10 years are given by their parents to a marabou, an Islamic teacher, to live the life of a garabou. The young children often live on the property of their teacher or in abandoned buildings and sheds with up to 30 other children. The only education the children receive is rote learning the Quran in Arabic, which they don't understand, and by the time they are 17 years old, they can recite the entire book by heart. The boys are not given any food, clothing or other life necessities from their teachers, so in the time they are not studying, they are sent off into the streets to beg for food and money. As well as begging for themselves, each day they must bring back a certain sum of money and food for their teacher. If they fail to meet the requirements, they are beaten. Their teachers also require them to work physically, making mud bricks, planting and harvesting crops, collecting firewood, fetching water and shepherding the animals. They live in a constant state of tiredness and always take advantage of every opportunity to sleep, albeit for a few minutes. These boys do not choose this life and do not want to remain in this situation, but they have little choice. They often end up in villages far from their families, if they have any, and even from their country of birth. If they run away and make it to their families, they are often sent straight back to their teacher. So what can we do for these intelligent kids with beautiful smiles, forced into a life of slave-like conditions? How do we restore to them the dignity of humanity that was stripped from them and give them a fighting chance at a future? I think the answer is love, provision and education. They need a place where they can be free from social ridicule and play like the children they are. They need a place where they can be nourished physically with food and basic medical care and emotionally with love and a sense of self-worth. They need basic education and skills so that when they leave the Garibu system as teenagers, they will have a chance to get a job and end their poverty. During my first year in Africa, my heart was really captured by these boys, and I provided a safe place where between 20 and 30 boys came for one or two meals a day, took baths and washed their clothes. The boys were able to come and eat and hang out at the house during their free time. I modelled and taught hygiene, treated their wounds and took them to the hospital when necessary. I set them on my knee and hugged them, even when they were covered in dirt, smelt bad and hadn't washed in more than a week. I will be continuing the same work in Mali with a new centre for the Garibus. In addition, I also hope to offer some education, reading, writing and French. Eventually, I hope to provide a home for the boys who want to get out of this system but don't have anywhere else they can go. These boys deserve what most of us take for granted, a childhood, and I want to give them as much of that as I can. I will show them the love of God and the hope of Christ with the goal of giving them a new life. <laughs>